evening. Welcome back to the Painting in Quarantine series. This is week four. Tonight I'm actually going to do a live painting demo. Just pick something easy. We picked this um, this brick and this orange for you tonight. Um, just figured something simple. We only got a half hour here. Uh, I've gone ahead and set up my palette already. So I have the uh, Pyrrole Red, the Cadmium Yellow, the Ultramarine Blue, and then the Black uh, ivory black and then also the titanium white. So I just take this brush, just a clean brush, uh, regular um, canvas, just um, cotton canvas that you can pick up at a uh, store online. So I'll start by getting my brush, a uh, little bit of medium on there. And the very first thing I want to do is spend probably about a minute or two laying out the composition and drawing where I think I want uh, this, this image to fall on the canvas. Um, so tonight I'm going to paint a lot, and if you guys have questions, um, you can ask as I go along. This is on uh, Facebook Live for you guys that are uh, watching on YouTube, so uh, if this, that'll be a rebroadcast. So if you uh, hear me answering questions and things, that's because it was on uh, Facebook Live too. Alright. So this doesn't have to be too exact, we're just kind of having some fun. This will probably be a little study, I would call this, I guess. And it doesn't really matter how much paint's on there at this point. Uh, we're just trying to mark it down. When you're doing this, you're just kind of making adjustments as you go along. I'm just trying to show like an indication of where I think everything is going to ultimately fall on this composition. Looking at the measurements of things, um, you know, how far a line should go. I might extend out the block a little bit. I think it needs to be a little bit bigger. This is okay, this is part of it. Just so it looks pleasing to your eye. So th this won't matter because we'll go right over that. I want to drop in this line at some point, trying to get that angle right. It's a little bit more up like this. And then we're looking at, I'm looking at the size of the orange in proportion to the length of the brick. And what you can also do <clears throat> is you can use your brush and if you hold your brush out, you can measure. I have one eye closed, I have my right eye closed and I have my left eye. So this is my arm fully extended. I can measure this brick, all right? And then I can do the same thing here and I can see that I'm actually a little bit too long now. So I want to come back in here and we'll probably fix this out a little bit. Okay. And then I can also then see with my arm straight out, I can see how big that orange is coming off that corner too. And I'll do the same thing here. This will show me exactly where I can put the orange. So it goes about here. Okay, so that, that's a good way to measure is just using that paintbrush tool um, like that with your eye. One eye closed, arm straight out. That's a great way to measure. Uh, a lot of artists will do that too with um, portraits too. They'll take you know, the nose, the width of the eyes. Um, but that's a good way to try to get uh, everything measured out. So I'm doing the same thing too with the orange on the left side of the orange. Come over here. I actually got that pretty good, just eyeballing it. Okay, so the orange is actually pretty small on this one, but that's okay. I wouldn't spend too much time being too worried about all the details of your drawing and try to get it all in because you'll make a thousand adjustments or more as you go along anyway, so it doesn't really matter uh, in terms of getting this exactly exactly perfect. I see a lot of times people spend way too much time um, trying to adjust out everything and get it uh, perfect in their drawing, but it doesn't matter because you're going to be making those adjustments as you go along in the painting. Um, so now that I got basically the rough shape of where I think everything's going to lie, I'll uh, probably move into a larger brush here and what I'll do is I'll do the background just to give it some point of reference um, just to put that in so I know what the color I'm working off of 
is going to be roughly here. So I'm just going to throw in. And what I mean by this is when this color is going to come up against this color, I can see the value. And what I mean by value is how strong or how weak the color is compared to the color behind it. It's very difficult to work with this just white surface. So you want to, um, I usually put the background in at least near the object. And now this is also kind of drawing too, because you're shaping this as you go along also. But when we start to put this color in, you can tell if it's working or not against that color. In this case, I'm just using my uh, light box that we made a few weeks ago. I actually really like the light box. I think it's one of the best things that we made in a long time. Um, did that out in the garage. You know, it was about, I think it was about $85 with the lumber. Uh, if anybody's interested in measurements or how to make one, I'd be happy to share that information with you. Uh, I can give you the measurements. I have the drawing and things like that. I'll post that uh, online if anybody's interested in that too. So we're just throwing in the background. It doesn't really matter. I really like this the straight up black background. Whenever you do backgrounds too, you don't want to sit here and go like this and just kind of dash it in. It won't look too natural um, when you do that. So when you put in a background, you want to do abstract brush strokes. So you kind of want to just throw it around and wheel these things around. It doesn't really matter. It looks way more natural to do it like this than if you sat here and just tried to go like this across the canvas. It's not going to look right. And it, uh, if you're trying to do realism, it won't give the look of it being more, um, it won't give the look of it being as real as if you do it just randomly. Jump around the canvas too. Um, I think we talked about on one of the videos that if you were to paint the canvas, if you start in this corner and just kind of did this, by the time you reach this corner, if you're painting a painting this way or this way or, you know, corner to corner and not jumping around, if you started here, by the time you get over here, it's going to not con connect together. It's better to jump around with the painting as you paint. Uh, I'm just putting in, when I'm dipping, I'm putting in more uh, medium, more uh, thinner, and stand oil to the paint. You can actually feel, when you're painting this, you can start to feel the brush drag and you can also see that kind of stippling effect. The, the paint's not moving as fluid as it should. So you go into your medium. I'll take a little bit of the, the medium off the brush and I'm going back into the paint. I just want it to be uh, almost like you're spreading uh, warm butter on a piece of toast. It should give you that kind of ease of spread on the oil. You shouldn't have any drag or catch to the brush and um, if you start working with the oil paint and start painting you, you'll feel that and you'll be able to tell exactly what I'm talking about over some time. Um, so you, you just dip back in there. You want basically no friction is what you're looking for. This will also help um, when you're doing that too is keep the brushes alive because if you were, this is going to act like a sandpaper over time. So if you were just painting this with like a dry brush, your bristles can actually wear down a lot faster too. So the medium helps uh, lubricate the bristle and keep it from wearing out. All right, so we're just tossing this in. This is going to be a little bit lighter in here um, because of the light box. Um, you can see the light source there. Um, so I might just throw a little bit of black in there for now. And when I'm painting here, I want to go um, light to dark in color. I don't want to start with the highlights. I don't want to start with white or yellow because it'll actually um, get into the bristles of the brush and it'll end up milking out the colors and it won't be as true. And it just works a lot easier uh, in the oil painting world if you work yourself dark to white versus light to dark. It's kind of reverse. Like if you're painting a room, you think it'd be easier to, you know, paint a room that's white, a dark color, than to paint a room that's dark a light color. Kind of works backwards in the oil painting world. So I'm just filling this in. It doesn't have to be anything specific. You could really make the background anything you want. I just personally enjoy the, the black at the moment. I'm really into that kind of look. I just did uh, the painting with some apples and we put a fabric and in the light box and that worked out pretty well. You can drape that light box. You could hang, you know, any type of fabric that you wanted to. 
Yeah, you could add another uh, light to that if you wanted to go in there and add a secondary light source. Uh, you can do that too. It's really versatile. Um, the light box measures two feet deep by three feet wide. And it's actually perfectly measured to this point. The center point of the light box is the height of my eye as I'm seated here. It's 51 inches. So that way I don't have to look up or look down to see the object. I'm not straining because the more that you, when you're painting an object from life, the more times you have to go look at it or work to look at it. If you're moving to look over here at it, you're going to be less likely to look at it. So you want it to be, you want your uh, canvas and your material and your subject material to be very close to each other. So you're, you're more prone to go look at it than if it's farther away. You're going to want to jump, jump over, uh, not jump over as much to look at it. This will make it much easier. All right, so I'm not too worried about this right now. So we'll just throw that in. That's going to be the highlight anyway. All right, so clean out the brush. Now I'm looking, thinking, okay, what's the next dark color? Um, I'll probably start with the this side of the brick. Um, it's kind of, in my opinion, it definitely got some red. So this is a limited palette. Uh, a lot of people uh, get kind of overwhelmed by the limited palette. What do I do with it? How does it work? Um, you know, so. It, Everything, all the colors in the world are primary colors. You got your pyro red, cadmium yellow, ultramarine blue. Um, so you just basically begin mixing this and working with it as you go along. So I can tell, you know, the red's too hot. And what you can do too is, okay, so let me load the brush up. So you can take this brush and you can hold it out to the brick. And if you see that it's too dark, you can go in and make an adjustment. So this is color checking. So I'm loading up the brush again. I can tell right now that this is too hot. And what I mean by hot is that it's got too much red in it. So I'll go in and I'll grab some blue and try to cool that down. Okay, I'll color check that again. Might be too much blue. We can just put a, a sample on here and see. It's a little bit too purple. Um, in my opinion, it might have a, a slight bit of white to it. Um, because of that chalkiness of the brick, but I don't want to introduce white yet because it'll end up uh, milking out the rest of my colors and it'll make it look ghostly. So we'll start with this and it's, it's okay to do it uh, intentionally dark and then you can go through and lighten it up after. That's, that's totally fine. Not worried about all the little uh, bumps and grooves of the brick. That's okay. That'll come uh, you know, as we work with it. Okay, so I'm finding it to be a little bit uh, of a purple color, so I'm just reaching into my black. I'll adjust that out a little bit. Okay. So right now I'm just working on the shape of this block. You gotta get some more uh, thinner on there. So three steps to the painting is shape, color, and value. So right now I'm just looking at the shape of the block. I'm not worried about, okay, there's a little bit of chip here at the bottom. You know, then there's this other, you know, little uh, indent at the top. I'm not thinking of any of that. I'm just going in and putting in a basic block shape. And we'll adjust the color as we go along. Again, you don't want to sit here and paint this like this or like this with your paint because it will not give it uh, the abstract look of uh, being natural. It'll be an odd uh, finish to it. It won't look real. It'll look like a drawing. Actually picking up a little bit of yellow. I think it's got uh, some brown qualities to it. So brown you just make with the three uh, colors use red, yellow, and blue. So it's coming out a little green. You can neutralize your green with some red. It's pretty thin. And then we'll put some black in there too. You want to really, if you're trying to do realism, you really want to make what's known as dirty colors. And what I mean by dirty colors is you don't want to have it be this pure red, this pure yellow. In nature, it's very rare to find these, you know, not uh, pure, pure colors like that. 
the more dirty they are, they have like a brown in them, or maybe there's a black in them, or something like that. You'll see that's just a more uh, organic and, and dirty color. So you, if you make a dirty color that you're trying to paint like that, you're probably gonna be more likely to have it look like the real thing. And we're just trying to get this base down. It's a little hard on the cam on the canvas too. It's going to suck up some of the materials uh, in terms of the pigment and the paint. So I'm still making new color as we go along because I'm running low on it. You could sit here and take your palette knife and you can make a big load of that color if you wanted to. Um, I think it's better, in my opinion, I kind of make it as I go, as I need it, because I think that variation of the different color is, is a good thing because it makes it look more natural and more real. As you jump along, you'll see some artists, they sit there and they mix um, you know, a huge pile of that one color and then work off of that. And that's fine too, you can do it that way, but um, this is my personal preference. I like to kind of make a little bit, make a little bit more, make a little bit more because that variation between the colors um, over the surface will make it look uh, more real and more natural. So this technique is just kind of Pushing the paint in here is called scrumbling. That's what the official name is of it. Okay. All right, so now uh, I'm looking at uh, up near the, the orange, we have a similar uh, tone. So while the brush is loaded with that color, I might as well go in and put the shadow in here um, while we got everything on the brush. It's pretty close to that, so I'll put that in too. Okay, and we'll work with that in this method being exact science. I would say that this is a study. I wouldn't say that this is anything that I'm you know, looking to eventually hang in the Louvre or anything like that. This is just a study for having fun, trying to play around with light, color, value. And that's okay to do those. And not everything you paint needs to be something that you're gonna put out to the world or, or, or you know, try to market or sell to friends or give it to anybody. Could just be for your fun just to work through a thought process so now i'm going to work on the side because it's my next step in, in my step, step out my color because it's going to this is obviously middle in terms of value compared to the top the top's the lightest so again i'm working dark to light so i'm looking at the side um and try to uh, put that color in there so now i might actually start to dip into the white a little bit white's very very powerful you don't need uh, too much uh, to get it going I don't want to put too much in there because it'll end up, like I said, milking out the color. You'll lose the color value. Okay. Got to be very careful with the yellow too. Um, you know, we used to say in school that yellow was the weakest color, but it's also the strongest color. And what I mean by that is you can see how vibrant and how bold the cad yellow is. It's it's crazy, but um, if you put it by itself, it's very, very bright, but if you add it to something, it can actually be very, very weak, but it's the, the, the right tone uh, value that you need to set. With that, again, I just took the littlest, probably, uh, you know, uh, just a half a flick of paint in there. You don't need too, too much. It's gonna pick up some of that black, that's okay. Um, it's okay to what we call lose the edge in the paint too. What I mean by that is where these two colors collide. That's part of oil paint. You don't mind, you know, care if it ends up uh, getting into each other. That's that's okay. It actually gives it a more natural look if if you lose that edge. If you have a hard edge on your structure, it tends to again not look as real. I'm finding that to be a little bit dark in my opinion, so I might go in add a little bit more white to it. Again, very, very, very little white. If you put too much in, it's hard to get out. You can get it out. Um, one of the colors that works really, really well to get out if you have too much white uh, in your painting, believe it or not, is uh, Burnt Sienna, which is a reddish brown color. It actually will go in and neutralize um, the white. Okay, so now uh, I'm okay with that for now. We'll adjust our values at the end. Remember, it's shape, color, value. So right now we're doing the um, shape and the color and we'll adjust it as we go along. What I mean by value will be the relationship between this color and this color when we're done. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm gonna wanna do the top now. I think it's got, obviously it's like a pinkish color. So I'm gonna work towards that. I'll keep it separate in case I need to dip back into that. It's got a lot of white in there. It's a very washed out color. It's close to the light source. I'll dip into some of this. I'll pull some of that in. It's looking like a little bit of brown kind of color to it. So maybe I'll go back up into that brown. It's got quite a bit of white in it. It's on the highlight. It's up near the light. A little bit of blue in there just to calm it down. Need some more medium and my brush starting to drag a little bit even on this glass. This is a glass palette. I really like it. Um, it's made by a company called New Wave. And what's nice about the glass palette is you can scrape it off when you're done painting. It's pretty easy to clean in that regard. So I spend a lot of time just mixing on the palette because the more time you spend here, uh, the less time you have to spend correcting it on the painting. So this is okay. Don't get frustrated if you have to chase that color uh, working with like a limited palette. That's totally normal. Yeah, the glass palette too, it's got the gray background to it, uh, which is nice because it's a neutral uh, color. If this were uh, brown or white or a different color like that, it could actually affect uh, the color of the pigment. So I'll just put this in and then um, we can go from there and make adjustments if we don't think it's right. That's okay. Just kind of shape it in there. So the shadow will work on this. So just kind of, again, just shaping it doesn't really matter. Some more medium on the brush. Again, not worried about all the little details of the block just yet. This is purely trying to get a base color on the block to begin to work with. I'm seeing that this end of the block and my where I'm seated is actually a little darker. So I went back in and grabbed some of that dark uh, color that we made uh, for this side. I'm just going in and throwing some of that in there. Okay. So that's just to set that in. I might put a little bit more highlight on this side before I clean out this color. too much about that just yet. All right, so clean out the brush. I want to finish this here. It's kind of bugging me. Um, I don't like that it's there. So I'll jump back in and just get that covered pretty quick here. So it's got a very dark bottom edge here. There's no light against this bottom edge. I would say it's pretty much a true black probably put a little bit of blue in there if you uh, wanted to. In one of my other videos on YouTube, I show you how to make another type of black um, using a lizard and crimson and uh, phthalo green. You can actually make a very nice black with those two colors also. So if you haven't checked that video out, um, be sure to do that too. It's on the, my YouTube channel. If you're watching this on Facebook Live or Facebook, it's uh, Van Patten Art is the channel on there and I post different videos all the time, uh, things I'm working on. So as we build away from this brick, uh, the light is actually in my shadow boxes, or light box rather, is behind the subject. So the shadow is going to cast this way. So it's going to get lighter towards this side because the light's actually coming down through. So again, we're working dark to light. Uh, 
I'm still shaping the block. I'm still looking at the drawing of the block as I do this. I want to make adjustments to it. That's really um, the painting the whole time is just correcting things that you think look off. It doesn't have to be perfect right from the jump. I'm jumping around and no one's ever going to come in here and you know, or any still life that you're working from and, and hop down and look at it and say, hey, wait a minute, you know, that thing's not perfect, perfect. Um, it doesn't really matter, um, you know, how that works out for you. I got the five minute warning here. We might have to continue this one into um, next week's too. That's okay. So now I'm just starting to put the highlight in. Shape that out. I'll do this quickly here, so at least we can get the, the shape, the color, and the value, or the values we can work on next time. It really starts to to pop. I, there was always an interesting moment uh, in a painting where I, I call it the turn, where it starts to become two dimension. It goes from being two dimensional to being three dimensional, and for me, that was always a really exciting moment in the painting when it, you can start to really start to see what the heck it's going to be. Um, that's a fun moment when you're painting. If, the more you do it and if you paint, uh, you experience that. It's very, very cool when it happens. I'll throw that orange in real quick just so we have something there. Uh, let me just finish this corner. If we go a couple minutes over, that's okay. Get some bonus time maybe tonight. <laughs> if you guys have any questions on anything that you're seeing tonight or painting in general, let me know. Uh, but I'm always happy to answer for you guys. My wife will attest I like talking about art, so there's no worries there. Or anything. Or anything. <laughs> Most every topic I think holds my interest. It's kind of interesting how that goes. Like. Oh, you like uh, Romanian stamp collecting? I'm sure we can probably find something we can talk about in that regard. The light kind of disappears in the background. My shadow box here, um, from where I'm seated, it kind of touches that black corner. So this is, again, the abstract of the brush. I don't want to sit here and blend this all in. You can if you want to. Um, I personally think it looks better when you don't, okay? So I want to get that white of that, this, orange taken care of because it's driving me crazy. So let's fix that. All right, so again, just dipping into my uh, CAD, uh, sorry, my pyro red and my CAD yellow. And now I'm working towards that orange color. Okay, so I wanna go into the shadow a bit first. So that's a good mid-tone. Um, so the opposite when you're doing orange shadow would be actually uh, to bring in some blue into that. That's the opposite side of the color wheel. When you look at a color wheel, you know, the red, yellow, orange, green, blue, purple, the uh, blue is on the opposite side. So that's your shadow color. It would actually be kind of that dirtier, uh, again, the dirty orange made by adding some blue to it. I think I can put a good way to probably put some more blue in it. Doesn't matter if you go a little bit too dark. Always good to go dark, if anything. Okay. Again, I'm just kind of punching in the paint. It doesn't have to be an exact stroke, 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 you know, make it perfectly look like a, a basketball or anything. It just doesn't matter where these colors fall right now because you're adjusting it as you go along uh, in the painting. All right, so I want to clean that color out, and now I'm looking for the highlight color value. So I might go back in that same color we made, add a little bit more cad yellow to that. Where these two colors intersect, again, it doesn't really matter, you know, that the colors smash into each other. That's actually a really good thing. That's a nice thing with oil painting. Again, with a black background here, 
If they come in and touch each other, that's okay. Let me clean that out. I'll get a little bit of that blackout. We're working towards that highlight, so grab some more cad yellow. As you can see there, we're working towards that light source at the top. And you would make adjustments to the color as you go along. So we get this base down. All right. I'll leave that for now. I'll go back in. I want to, now that I got that shape, I want to just add uh, this dark underneath. Just define that shape a little bit more. Going into my black, it's going to pick up the other colors that we've already put down. That's okay. I want to just grab some of that shadow under there. So this uh, painting technique is uh, what they call wet into wet or alla prima. But you can let it dry and go back and work with it. I personally just like to work on it wet to wet. Um, I just find it's better. I like the way that the colors kind of come together and everything else like that. So that's a very um, base painting there. That's how you would start. That's a good start. We obviously had this uh, show's only half hour long. But from here, um, I'm going to start to look at more of the detail more of the what we discussed is the value the relationship of uh, this color to the other in the still life uh, composition and how it works and continue to make adjustments as we go along so if you have any questions about what we did today or how this works uh, again uh, I'd be happy to help answer those for you go ahead and comment in the comment section i'll get back to you or i'll answer them in next week's video uh, i appreciate you guys spending time with us here as always i uh, hope you guys are staying safe in quarantine and uh, I'll look to join you guys next week. So until then, I hope you stay safe. If you have enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for notifications of future videos. If you have a question about art or this video, please be sure to leave a comment. Thanks for watching. Happy painting and God bless.